Hello, welcome to the World Cafe Podcast. This podcast has been designed with curated content that centers on the power of words. Can we really do anything without speaking? Can we really do anything without the agency of words? Yes, that is what this podcast is all about. And I am your host, Amakri Isobwe, your neighborhood word trader. I believe in the power of words, for it is the unit of creation. I trade in words to profit my world. Hello there. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good everything. Mm, Yes, we are back again into that space, the World Cafe Live Show. You know how we do it on the show. Yes, we come into that space to do what? Lean on one and others' experience to forge a positive path. Wonderful. How are you doing? Beautiful where you are. I'm good. It's been wonderful. You know, sunny day, pretty cool around here where I am. Pretty, pretty cool. What are we going to be doing today? You are seeing it on the screen. Yes, the mind of innovation with Dr. Noel Akbata. You know, the mind is such a pretty wonderful thing a gift that God gave to us. You know, when you harness the potential of your mind, oh, your environment falls within that sphere of your mind. Yes. Now, I'm going to do the show differently today. This person, I mean, he's wonderful. I'm going to read uh, as in the bio, the introduction or whatever before I bring him on, you know, and uh, we will go on from there. Dr. Noah Lakpata is a seasoned innovation strategy consultant, social innovator, impact investor, and global business speaker. After undergoing a massive career transition from medicine and surgery driven by purpose, passion, and a need for excellent performance, Dr. Noah Lakbata over the years has developed a massive interest in harnessed necessary skill in the areas of strategy and execution, social innovation, human resource development, project management, social business sector development, and national development, making him highly sought after. He is a renowned knowledge expert speaker at several global meetings, mostly especially the prestigious Horace's World Economic Forum for Emerging Market, events which brings together chairman, CEOs of some of the world's trade leading firms alongside global political leaders, an event described as the new Davos. Yes, he is currently serving as the African director for the Horace's World Economic Forum for the Emerging Markets and has created veritable platforms for economic and political integration. He chaired the Nigerian China Netherlands Forum at Horace's, which held its first session at the Global China Business Meeting at The Hague, Netherlands. That was in November 2013. In 2015, he founded Nigeria's Electricity Market Summit Group and became one of the select Africans to be invited to the prestigious Ambrosetti Forum, which is named at the number of the Italian pri- I mean, private think tank and the fourth in Europe in the University of Pennsylvania's global go-to think tank index report. He founded and built strategy for the National ICT Youth Empowerment Scheme in partnership with an arm of government, the National Information Technology Development Agency, currently being executed nationwide in the nation of Nigeria. He is a fellow of the Institute of Management Consultants, International Council of Consulting Institutes, and a certified management consultant of the International Council of Consulting oh, Institutes. You'll be wondering, who is this guy? Okay, you want to see him. I want to see him like you too. Let me bring him on. And there he is, Dr. Noah Lakpata. How are you doing? Fantastic, fantastic. <laughs> Reading that profile, one will wonder, who is this guy? Is he a human being? I mean, is he in this galaxy or another galaxy? How are you? I'm very fine, sir. I'm very welcome, fine. welcome, I'm welcome to, to the pleasure, pleasure. So how are you? Fantastic, I'm great. Uh, how are you? Right. I'm good, I'm good. Now, I don't know where to start from, but I'm just, I just want to ask who is this guy, no, Dr. Noah Lakbata? I've read one or two things about him, but let's hear it like we will say, the leap of the lion. 
Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you for for, for this uh, kind opportunity uh, you have presented to me. Uh, I do not take it for granted. And, uh, You're welcome. I am excited to be part of your vision. Uh, when, you, when, when you say, who am I? I, I think I would answer from uh, a multidimensional perspective, uh, mm. which, which is, first of all, I understand where I'm from. Okay, and um, where I'm from guides my identity, guides my mandate, guides my reason for being. Mm. And um, I have a firm understanding, you know, about my creation, about why I was sent to this earth, and um, why I was gifted the way I was gifted, and given the kind of abilities I was given. So mm. I'm pretty, I'm pretty much clear about God's mandate upon my life and why He created me. And mm. what exactly he wants me to do in the world. So that has guided uh, my trajectory uh, of activities over the years, uh, you know, spanning several sectors, um, you know, across several kinds of networks, mm. um, in public and private sector, and all of that. You know, that has defined the kind of person I am. I, I do not take for granted the opportunity God has given uh, to me, especially opening the kind of doors he has opened, uh, mm. bringing me in front of the kind of people he has brought me in front of. So basically, th this is Noel. Uh, he, he's, he's someone who understands why he's in the world. He's someone who understands the mandate upon his life as a nation builder. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, some, he's someone who is not just talking about it, but walking the talk, as mm. it were, and, and seeing how he can utilize um, his walk on the face of the earth to inspire others to also... Um, you know, execute on their own dreams and, and their own mandates as well. So in a nutshell, that is who I am. Uh, I don't think there's anything added to this man. I'm, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just a man on a mission. And when that mission is done, I will drop this body and my spirit will return to my nature. So basically, Amazing. that's who I am. You know, there's something about people who know who they are. You, you know, the world gives way for them to just leave and exhibit you know give of that essence that god has placed in them and hearing you speak it's not like you're let me not say it as in a, out of place you're not bragging i know who i am you know like i know who i am i know my identity so the world has no choice but to listen to me open up because i am here for a reason amazing now going through your profile this guy studied medicine and surgery how come he left that and went into the i mean that space of innovation entrepreneurship and all that what happened stay with us we'll be right back hello nerds come listen to the history nerd united podcast and let's make history fun again we interview today's best authors, whether they are established Pulitzer Prize winners or someone debuting their first book. Let us show you that history is not a boring class you took in high school, but a place where the best stories come from. And we don't just cover history. We also love to chat about true crime, biographies, memoirs, and so much more. So head on over to History Nerds United and let us introduce you to your new favorite book and learn the story behind the story. History Nerds. Okay, um, I, I schooled in Edo State, uh, University of Benin Demonstration Secondary School to be precise. Okay. And um, in my class, in, in the class I was in, in secondary school, I was the best in my class. Um, okay. You know, I'm, in my set, I wouldn't say I was top three or anything, but I was one of the one of the very good ones. Mm. But some, somewhere along the line, I, I made a decision to read medicine because I felt I could. It was it was it wasn't it wasn't a decision that I made in consultation with my creator at the time because I didn't have mm. a relationship with him at that time. There was okay. there was there was no point where I had a conversation with God to ask him what exactly I wanted to do. It was just based on the fact that I felt I could do it. I was intelligent mm. enough to do it. Um, I left EDSS with about you know eight distinctions out of ten, and I, I felt it was. It was the next best thing to do. Just going to medicine was a prestigious course. Uh, you know, a lot of my friends were also going into medicine at the time. But, but something critical happened to me that could have helped me make a better decision, but I didn't listen. 
Um, I took I took the jump exams, and of course I was confident I was going to take on that exam, you know, mm. and, and, and deal with it at all. But something very phenomenal happened when the results came out. Um, I went to check the results of my father at the time with a lot of confidence, but my father is his friend. Okay. And we, we went to, to the University of Benin where the mm-hmm. results were displayed. And I checked the results and out of 400, I scored 125 or 124, thereabouts. Wow. I was devastated because I knew that that wasn't my result. So you, you could you could see the disappointment in the face of my father and his friend because they knew that I was intelligent and they couldn't mm-hmm. understand why I was scoring 128. I, I went straight to the home of the man who sat beside me during the exam and actually did a lot of copying from my work. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> at, the, at the time, you know, he, he was my friend and I, I couldn't, I, I needed to cross check his work to find out. But probably I was crazy or something. I was living in an yeah. alternate world. I, I couldn't understand what was happening to me. And he had checked his result and I think he scored 225. You don't say. And, and then I knew there was a problem somewhere. I knew I knew I was in <laughs> I knew I was in a deep, deep, deep well. And yeah. the next the next day somebody advised I check the jam office because you know, you know when they just dis- at that time they displayed yeah. at, at, at the university, they also display another, you know, the exact replica at the jam mm-hmm. office. So I went there and um, I saw no results. There was no result for me. My result was black. So it was obvious that something was wrong. And kind of like gave me some hope because I felt, mm. okay, no result. That means that that 125 I saw was definitely... It was not good. yours. Yeah. So I was going to head to the, to the main office in Lagos to then check my result. I went to my father to the main jam office. And of course, uh, the Nigerian factor hits me. Uh, we were asked to pay a small token for my result, my real results to be brought out. And my father wasn't going to be having that. He was like, he knows his son. He knows I could pass this exam without any of it. Why should he pay a token for a yeah. result that he knows that you know I scored you know, definitely well enough to move to the next level? And my father refused. And I demanded, I wrote a letter demanding for my results to be released. And I think that was the wrongest thing I was going to do because it was more like saying, okay, you want to call our bluff. We're asking you yeah. to give us a token and you're writing the letter, you know, and that was it. They gave me the same 125 that I complained <laughs> about. <laughs> Whoa. They, they, they gave me the same 125 I was complaining about and my world crumbled. I, I, I couldn't believe what was happening to me. All, the first batch for the for the University of Benin came out for medicine came out. Ninety percent of my friends went in. Went to school. I was in Lagos waiting and hoping that something was going to happen, you know, but nothing happened. I came back to Benin and I was devastated. I hardly read for the next jam exams. I passed that exam in flying colors and exam. My preparation for that one was nothing compared to the first one, but, mm-hmm. but I, I, I passed. I picked the cut of my. But something had happened to me inside. You know, something, something had something shifted. broke. Something broke. Something had shifted on the inside. My total, my total um, perception about academics, the academia, and all of that mm. had shifted. I started asking myself certain questions. This is what I really wanted to do. Was God trying to stop me from doing something? Um, you know, I started asking myself a whole lot of questions up yeah. until uh, t- two hundred or three hundred level when I listened to one man. Uh, his name is Dr. Miles Monroe. I don't like calling him late because I think he's still alive. He's very much alive. He's very much alive. <laughs> I listened to him when he spoke about purpose, and yeah. I think I think he spoke about purpose at the Azusa, the Azusa on the Azusa platform. Yeah, um, I, I can never forget that video. I, I watched and we watched that video, and it, it totally shifted my perception. It totally changed my life. Um, it had a lot of negative impact on my on my work in the medical field because um, I, I totally lost when I say I totally when I say I totally lost I mean it I totally lost passion for medicine I, I I suddenly didn't want to go to class anymore I didn't want to read medical books anymore I was more interested in reading material that was 
in, in line with where I knew I was going mm. to be headed, you know, immediately I left medical school. So that that yeah. that was the that was the driving force. That was the 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 change that happened in me while in medical school. And by the time I was done with medical school, when I was done with my house job, I said this was it. You know, I had to I had to go ahead and build, you know, what God wanted me to do. And, and that's exactly what I'm doing today. Amazing story. You know, it's like saying your story is like saying uh, a mistake that redirected you to what yeah. you were born to do, more or less. Oh, oh, in oh, quote, a mistake, in quote. But rather, yeah. you could see God orchestrating all of this and bringing you into that zone. Now, exactly. I'm going to go straight into this question because I know somehow you've listened to Mike's Mon- Dr. Mike's Monroe and you got your whole head should I say rewired, reset, oh, and yeah. all that? Now, yeah. somebody came into your life, or you met somebody who, should I say, further strengthened your conviction within this space. His name is Felad Rotoye. Let me hear that story. Yeah. How? How yeah. did it go? <laughs> yeah, I think it was sometime in. I was in medical school, and um, I was desperately in search for someone who was thinking nation building. Who was thinking? in line with with where I knew I was going. I needed to connect with that person because there's something very critical about discovering your vision. You know, mm-hmm. you have to you have to align with people who are going in the same direction as you. You True. cannot you cannot find yourself in the midst of people who are going in an alternate direction. It's going to kill mm-hmm. you. Um, so someone mentioned him, someone talked about him what he was talking about, um, the work he was doing across the country at the time. And I remember I sent him an email. Uh, I sent him an email asking to meet with him, to talk with him, just have a very brief conversation about my destination, my travel in medical school, because I was done. I was in there, but I was done. I was totally mm. just flipped. Uh, what, what saved me was the intelligence I have, you know, because... If, if God didn't bless me with that level of intelligence, I, could, I probably could have dropped out of medical school or be kicked out. Because mm-hmm. um, with the level I was attacking my courses, other people would have failed out. You know, they, they, they wouldn't have made it to final year. But I just I just kept myself in there. But the passion was missing. Everything was gone. I wasn't I wasn't concentrating. I was more concentrate. I, I was concentrating more on economic issues, national mm. development issues. People around me thought I was crazy. They thought I was mad. They thought, <laughs> they thought something, is, something is definitely wrong with this guy, you know? And, you were, and, you were <laughs> seeing the medical, you were, you were seeing the medical <laughs> people like, like trees, more or less. Like, <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm not here with you. I'm not here with you. <laughs> it was, you know, I, I remember I would look at my consultants. I didn't want to be like any one of them. I, I couldn't oh. find them. You know, I respected them, but I didn't want to be like them. I didn't mm-hmm. want to walk. I didn't want to walk their journey, you know. My, my colleagues would come back from discussion classes and talk talk excitedly about you know, one thing they read somewhere mm-hmm. and one, and I'll just be looking at them in a, <laughs> with this blank stare, and, mm-hmm. and they knew and they knew something was wrong with this guy, but they couldn't place it at the time. But I'm sure now everybody can place it because they now yeah. see, you know, where the journey has taken you to. So I, I contacted Fella, and uh, he responded. The, the fantastic gentleman that he is, he responded telling me he was coming to to Benin at the time to train all states trust back. I can never forget that experience. Uh, he was going to be training the management team on um, a couple of issues, and I think he was doing it on a national on a nationwide basis. So he was going from state to state handling their branches. Yeah. So he yeah. came to he came to uh, Edo State. I booked him into a hotel. Uh, I remember it was it was Precious Palm Royal Hotel at the time. I booked mm-hmm. him into the hotel. You know, attended the training sessions with him, and when I watched his sessions and what he was talking about, his disposition, his the, the trajectory of his thoughts, mm. I knew this was the, this was the person I needed to connect with. And mm-hmm. you know, he was very welcoming. We talked about where I was headed. I wasn't too sure. We prayed together. Um, we went and we got to Lagos. He asked me to step into Lagos whenever I could when I was done with medical school, so I could start. Mm. You know, I could start moving in that direction. I got into Lagos. Went to, went to his house. It, and I stayed in his house for a while. You know, so he, he's just a phenomenal fellow. He is somebody that understands mission building. He understands mm-hmm. his market. And he has spent a good portion of his life building leaders that will take 
the mission, the, the concept and the philosophy of mission building to the streets. And that what he, that's what he has successfully done and what he's still doing to today. I celebrate that now. Beautiful. You know, you know how I describe him? If you've watched uh, the Carbonara effect, there's this magical whatever. I call, I call, I call him the FD effect. You know, you know, not like blowing his trumpet. He understands, just like what you just described now, he understands why he is here. And he's so passionate about it. He meets you with so much energy the way he meets the next person with the same amount of energy and everybody who comes away from meeting him you're just like what just happened to me i just had this shift in my spirit or something so i describe him in my own way the fd effect and hearing it from your voice i can relate with it i can right so after then what happened so where did you pick up from what what happened Okay, um, I went straight up to create my company, and uh, you know, it, it, doing doing that without the experience, you mm-hmm. know, in quotes, that you know, it, you know, the market desires, the market desires you to have certain levels of experience. You know, they yeah. want to hear you have your masters from here. They want to hear mm. you have your, your PhD from there. You know, mm. that's how that's how they ascribe um, respect to you as far as the industry is concerned. Now that's I concerned. knew I knew that I was getting into that industry coming from a totally different sector. I was coming from the health sector and I was going to be competing with people who have multiple master de- master's degrees in you know, economics, in business administration, in, in whatever mm-hmm. they've added, they've added PhDs to that. But I wasn't, I wasn't bothered because I knew that I had understood my mandate from you know, you know, quite a while back. I had started building myself just like David. I had started killing my lions and my bears, you know, mm-hmm. back in the forest. So I was, mm-hmm. I was pretty much ready. And I remember the, the first organization I handled was Zenith Bank, um, you know, in collaboration with the last firm. And, um, you know, I handled Zenith Bank for almost a year and the the impact was phenomenal. And after Zenith Bank, I did a couple of projects with some other institutions and I realized that my my work in the, you know, with with, with private sector organizations wasn't all all there is to it. And Mm. I, I needed to start building capacity to start dealing with the public sector um, I built capacity in those areas, taking loads of courses, um, attending loads of seminars, interacting with loads of mentors, uh, you know, finding myself on some of the largest platforms in the world and gaining experience from interacting with peers from across the globe. So I, I ventured into public sector innovation strategy uh, mm-hmm. way back way back in 2012, 13. Okay. Um, you know, handling the power sector transformation with the Transmission Company of Nigeria and the Federal Minister of Power. Uh, I held several retreats with the management team, trying to craft a direction for the power sector in Nigeria. It was, it was on the back of that that I created the Nigerian Economic Summit Group to have first-hand experience, being, bringing all the players together to mm-hmm. answer this one question. Why does Nigeria not have power? Why will a country like Egypt add 30,000 megawatts between 2015 and 2021 to their grid and we're mm. still struggling with maximal five, six thousand megawatts. You know, why is our grid still, still so weak? Why is it always collapsing? Why can't it handle a particular amount of you know power generated from the generating companies? And why can't it transmit enough power to the distribution companies? Why can't the distribution companies distribute enough power? You know, so I needed to bring all the players to into the into one room and yeah. hear them talk, hear them talk to one another. You know, and and see how we could innovate on their knowledge to create yeah. a pathway forward. We did two or three editions of that, and bringing all the major players together uh, from government and private sector to sit down and you know orchestrate you know a, a, a move forward. And yeah. after after dealing with the private sector, we have done the same thing in the agricultural sector, you know, mm-hmm. and all of that. So basically, this has been. Um, a, a, a discovery for me, understanding that look, yes, you can do this with the private sector. You can make money from them. You can you can do this and do that. But 
uh, nation building as it were, building, bringing private and public sector players together to, to innovate a path, innovate on a pathway forward, the best mm. possible pathway forward, you know, to, to the betterment of the country. That's what uh, I've been involved in for quite a number of years now. And uh, we're taking it to the next level very soon that would uh, impact upon every soul in this country. I guarantee you on that within the next few years. I like your energy. I like your energy. It's like somebody listening to you, like, is there hope in all of this? Is there hope, you know, looking at our country and what, you know, the power sector and all that, but listening to you, the passion with which you are delivering this tells me this guy knows what he's doing, you know, and honestly, give him that chance. You you would just see the whole place come alive like a Christmas tree. Now, 2023 is around the corner. I want us to dwell a little bit on that, you know, because... It's like Nigerians, the younger generation is looking for hope as you are now delivering. What's your take on the forthcoming election? Nigeria is looking for a real leader. And a real leader is one who understands what it means to competitively position your country amongst the global community of nations. Mm. So... And I'll explain what I've just said. Please do. There are five. There are five factors that affect how competitive a country would be. And I'll mm. give exam. I'll give examples, you know, relative to to that comment and how it affects Nigeria and other countries as well. Okay. Um, the number one. The number one factor that affects. The number one reason. Or the, the number one determinant of a nation's competitiveness. We call them factor conditions, the factors of production, mm-hmm. right? And, um, you know, you have basic factors and you have advanced factors. The basic yeah. factors include, you know, natural resources. So a country has um, a huge deposit of oil or a country discovers huge gas deposits. A country finds it has huge forest, forest reserves, you know, all these kinds of things. But those are basic factor conditions. So you see a country like Saudi Arabia that has um, huge deposits of oil, and has built its global competitiveness based on how it utilizes its oil resource. You see a country like you see a country like Qatar that has huge gas resources and has competitively positioned itself amongst the global community of nations because of how it uses and how it deploys that factor condition. So yeah. we go we then go into you know advanced factor conditions that have to deal with the people on the land. Okay, yeah. their level of their level of education. Um, when I when I'm talking about education now, I'm talking about their, their, how advanced their, te- their secondary, their tertiary educational system is. How yeah. advanced their, their vocational educational system is. So you mm-hmm. see a country like Japan, you see a country like China, you see a country like Germany. You know, mm-hmm. having very strong uh, vocational educational systems compared yeah. to other countries, which makes them more competitive when it comes to their levels of production and um, and exports and all of that, okay? Then yeah. you go to the second reason why a country or a nation outperforms another country. And um, Professor Michael Porter calls it demand conditions, okay? Mm-hmm. And, and by demand conditions, it, it, it means how much of, how, how, how much it, the people of a country buy their own products, yeah. okay? That will yeah. determine how competitive they would be. Okay, so you see that. Let's take the Germans for instance. They buy German. The yeah. French buy French products. The yeah. German will never agree with you that a French car is better than a German car. It is def- It is just not possible. Okay. Now, because they do that, and the demand, the, the home, the home, the in-country demand is very strong. It affects the demand outside of the country and you see more people from outside the country seeking to buy their products because of the strong demand and the strong confidence the people of that country have in their own products in nigeria in nigeria for example we don't have a strong demand for our products our women do not our women do not believe in their own hair they don't believe in their own makeup they don't believe in in, in a lot of the things you, you know that they, they put on we don't believe in our our, our producers you know, a Nigerian creates a drone. We, we don't want to, we're not interested in that. We want to buy the drone that's made in America or made in mm. Germany or, or whatever. We want to buy um, made in 
we want to buy champagne from all over the world, but we don't want to explore our pizza, home pizza from it, pizza from Italy. Yeah. Exactly. You know, so we don't have strong in-country demand driving, you know, our, our global competitiveness. That's number two. Number three is the business structure within a country, how competitive they are amongst themselves. Okay. Now you take a country like Japan. If I ask you, for instance, to mention five Japanese automobile brands, I'm sure you won't have a problem mentioning them. You will Never. mention Toyota, you will mention Nissan, you yeah. will mention, you know, all Mazda. these brands. Mazda, yeah. just, you could just keep going on and on. Now, because of the level of innovation and competition amongst these brands within Japan, their competition is so strong that they now outcompete other brands from other countries. Mm. So, 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 so in Nigeria, we do not have that level of competition amongst companies within certain sectors. Rather, you see monopolies. Dangote is a monopoly in this sector. Um, you know, uh, Innocent is a monopoly in the sector. You don't have that strong level of competition, you know, amongst companies within a particular sector that will drive in-country and, you know, and cross-border demand. And for the, the fourth reason that affects, uh, you know, the competitiveness of a nation is the I call it cluster, clusterization, you know, the, mm-hmm. the presence of, you know, different industries, sorry, different factors of production within a particular space. So yeah. you, go to Shen, you go to Shenzhen in China, uh, you, you see that they, they're producing a particular brand of um, electric car in, 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 in Shenzhen. And the yeah. guys producing the battery is just next door. The guys producing the tires are just next door. The, the, the university that trains the people that feeds them into the production line, they are just next door. They just you can find all of them within a particular cluster, cluster. which enables that kind of you know competitiveness coming out of that country. In Nigeria, you really you really don't have that. And the fifth reason, which is the most important reason of all, is the role of government in driving, you know, the competitiveness of a country. Mm-hmm. A strong leader, a strong government with strong institutions definitely impacts on all these factors I just mentioned that drives a, a nation's global competitiveness. So what Nigeria is looking for right now is a leader that understands global competitiveness, global competitive positioning, and is able to cast a long-term vision that is able to inspire the Nigerian people to fall in line with that vision. That is what Nigeria has lacked for a number of years. And yeah. we, we, we desperately... Um, are seeking for that kind of leader and we hope that um, Nigerians will look at the aspirants that have presented themselves um, as much as possible. I try to stay as, because of the institutions I represent, I try, as, mm-hmm. I try to stay as apolitical as I can, but I do know yeah. who I'll be voting for. And, uh, but, but I'm not going to be, you know, taking my own decisions and putting it on people. But yeah. I just want Nigeria to look at all the aspirants carefully, look at their backgrounds, look at what they have done over the years, look at their understanding of global competitive position. Where do they want to put Nigeria as far as oil, oil, you know, oil value addition is concerned the next, you know, 10 years? Yeah. Where do they want to put where do they want to put Nigeria as far as um, competitiveness in gas and gas product productivity is concerned the next 10 years? Yeah. The, 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 the Minister of State for Petroleum just said that uh, the Nigerian gas reserves are worth 800 trillion US dollars. Mm-hmm. Say Naira, 800 trillion US dollars. Nigeria is a mm-hmm. very rich country. But how can Nigeria take advantage of the current Russian Ukraine crisis to position itself as a preferred supplier of gas to Europe and the Americas? We need a leader that has that foresight and has that vision to sit on the table with global leaders and negotiate mm-hmm. and negotiate a deal for Nigeria because of the kinds of resource we have, especially as gas is concerned. Do yeah. you understand? So we, we need that kind of mind. We need that kind of mind that can pull the right people together in his team to yeah. position Nigeria, you know, on certain levels as far as you know the global community of nations are concerned. Nigeria needs to be talking about, we need to be top three here, top four there, top 10 here, top mm-hmm. top six in Africa as far as this is concerned. Yeah. We don't have that. We just have someone mm-hmm. who just says, okay, I have done a project. 
but how does that project make Nigeria competitive Translate. in this area? You don't just yeah. you don't ju you don't just put a rail somewhere. That rail must be connected to somewhere that is mm -hmm. bringing out something to make Nigeria competitive at something amongst mm -hmm. other nations. That's how it yeah. works. That's how it works. You don't looking at let, let me give you an example with the power sector. Um, and, and one of the administration, I, I, I don't want to call their name now. No, wor no, no worries. Go ahead. Just wanted, just started building, you know, power stations, generating stations, you know, across the country. Yeah. Arbitrary. And these stations were not connected to gas reserves. So you see a power station built in a particular place and there mm. is no gas. There is nothing, there is nothing on ground to power, power that station to generate electricity. That's, that gas station was just put there for sentimental reasons, to just mm. please certain people. It had yeah. no strategy, no strategy whatsoever backing that kind of decision. So mm. we don't we need, we need leaders who are thinking. We need leaders who will sit down and say, we want to make Nigeria competitive at X. And to do that, we have to have a gas station here. We have to have mm. a rail network here. We have to have mm. this. And this is how this will feed into this and that will feed into that. And at the mm. end of the day, when we do our performance monitoring and evaluation, we can now yeah. say that Nigeria is top five or top six after the next five, six years. That is how a leader should be thinking. And that is the kind of leader that we want. And I think that uh, 2023 gives us that opportunity yeah. and to vote that kind of person into position and hope that that person constitutes the, the requisite team, the kind of team that will take Nigeria in that direction. And hope is the atom of life. When you have hope, I mean, it, it stares you, propels you forward to think and to create and, you know, to really live. Dr. Noel, I wish I can go on to have this conversation. You, I mean, from your voice, there's this passion as in, I, I can't, I can't place it, but I know it's something, it's something, should I say, intoxicating. So what are you up to now? What are you up to? What's Dr. Noel doing now? What project are you on now? <laughs> okay. Um, in 2020, um, I led a delegation to um, have a private meeting with President Muhammad Abu Hari uh, to, okay. to, discuss, to discuss the formation and execution of Horasis Africa. And um, mm. in, that, in that meeting were key members of the Federal Executive Council, uh, the chairman of the Nigeria Governors Forum, the chairman of the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, would I say president of the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, and a lot of other captains of industry. And yeah. uh, what, I've been, what I've been doing is to drive the Horasis agenda uh, as far as Africa is concerned, but from a Nigerian perspective. Uh, okay. we, have, we have a lot of economic development initiatives that we're going to be rolling out uh, very okay. soon and okay. coincidentally after that meeting mr president i was nominated to join i was nominated and appointed uh to join the world social innovation forum uh the world social innovation forum is based in silicon valley and mm. it's, it's it's trying to position itself as the world economic forum from a social innovation perspective okay. so br bringing these two leading institutions together and wearing both both hats, uh, as far as the African continent is concerned, it, it it puts me in a position to drive a lot of developmental initiatives to the benefit of my country and the, and you know, as a spillover effect to the benefit of my continent. Uh, so within the next couple of months, we'll be rolling out some of these initiatives. Uh, okay. Some of them are in agriculture. Uh, some of All them right. will definitely benefit uh, the, the productivity of Nigerian farmers and the their ability to easily track and trace their products and, ex and make their products easily accessible to global exactly. markets. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we, we have fine-tuned relationships in that area and we're bringing that to bear, you know, in collaboration with the Nigerian Investment Promotion Commission, the Ministry of Trade and Investment, the Nigerian Export Promotion Council and, and, and a lot of other factors, uh, a yeah. lot of other institutions as well. Yeah. We're, we're also going to be intervening in the health sector. Uh, mm -hmm. we'll, be on, we'll be unveiling uh, a national tele, a national television a nationally televised uh, series that will drive the transformation of tertiary healthcare institutions across the country where yeah. we're going to be mobilizing resources from private sector entities within and outside the Horasis framework to see how we can impact upon tertiary healthcare in Nigeria putting world class equipment in these hospitals 
building the capacity of our doctors to meet um, a, a global demand and, and all of that. So we're starting basically in in these key sectors, health and agriculture, and then we hope you know, to, to impact other sectors as well. So there's a lot there's a lot coming. Uh, you know, we're having interactions on a daily basis with all the stakeholders. Uh, we've had we've had massive support from this administration. I must say, the vice president, uh, Professor Yemi Osibanjo. I think I met with him. I met with him close to about three or four times. Yeah, the, the, the vice the vice president's office, who you know, coincidentally heads the National Economic Council. They have been very supportive. The Nigerian mm-hmm. Governors Forum has been very, very, very supportive. The Nigerian Investment Promotion Commission, our uh, anchor. Government government partner have been very supportive. The office of the president, uh, the Nigerian Agri Business Group, the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, all these institutions have been very very supportive. You know, to ensuring that uh, we execute on our mandate. So there's a lot coming, and I think that Nigerians will be better for it at the end of the day. Beautiful guys, we've been talking with. Dr. Noah Lakpata, the mind of innovation. You will agree with me who have been having a swell time. You can hear from his voice that passion that translates into portfolio, tangibility. Uh, this is amazing. So, where do we catch Dr. Noah Lakpata if we want to catch him? Like, I want to connect with you. How do we do that? Okay. Uh, for very personal reasons, um, I'm very, 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 very cautious of my presence on okay. social media. Um, okay. I'm, I'm not. On, I'm not. I'm totally not on Instagram. I am not on Twitter. Uh, I'm, I'm only on Facebook. Or scarcely on Facebook. So you can catch me on my Facebook page. Uh, but I think okay. that will become that will become very active. You know, uh, in the next couple of months. And you can also okay. catch me on my on, on my website. Uh, you could you could join my community on my website where I share more, okay. and we'll be sharing okay. a lot more. more as we begin to execute on some of our initiatives that would um, that would impact upon the nation um, positively. Yeah, cool. And yes, I forgot to mention this. Uh, in collaboration with the Office of the President, we'll be launching the Presidential Innovation Investment Forum uh, okay. sometime in, 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 in late August. Yeah. Okay. So um, hardware innovators, software innovators will have an, mm. an opportunity to present their innovations for possible uh, financial support, for possible technical support, um, from, from the government of Nigeria and the international community, uh, I'll be talking. I'll be speaking about that on my website and on Facebook uh, within the next couple of months. So you can catch me on this platform so that you can get okay. first-hand information at the time you know we're about to roll out these activities. So that's how beautiful I can be caught. <laughs> beautiful. Like I said earlier, hope is the atom of life, and Dr. Noel is just giving us that atom or should i say those atoms that come together to form the molecule and all that we're so grateful he's a very busy person and i'm i, I want to say a very big thank you for taking out this time you know to come into the studio and share with us and give us now before i let you go i want you to encourage that that word that you always encourage yourself with when you are surrounded with so many challenges encourage my audience with that Okay, uh, I would say this, and I'm, I'm looking straight to the camera and addressing the, your audience so that they would have a perfect understanding of what I'm talking about. Now, when God created man and created the world, um, what he did was to create a system, and he, he, he created an entity called man to govern the system he had created, which is the earth. That is why he's called the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He created kings and he created lords. Kingship is a function of governance. You were first of all a king before you were ever called a Christian. And your your kingship is about territory. And your territory is psychological. It is in the minds of people. And your gifted in a particular way, you're given a particular ability to penetrate the minds of people so that you can now deliver the mandate of the kingdom into those minds. So everybody watching me understand this. Your life is relevant. You are a king. You are a lord. You may have made a mistake. You may be struggling with poverty or living under very, very stringent conditions, but that doesn't make you less of a king. You're just a king who is poor at the moment. You're just Mm. a king 
who is living in squalor at the moment. But mm. your kingship will be unveiled very soon. As long as you continue working on your skills, as long as you continue sh- sh- like Dave Day, you will meet up with the kinds of people who understand your trajectory and will be ready to invest their resources to take your dream to the next level. Now, the responsibility is on you to keep that passion burning. The responsibility is on you to keep your talent and your gifts in the on the front burner and keep mm. working on them. Mm. The responsibility is on you to take yourself away from the naysayers, cut them off, cut them mm. off. You mm. do not need those voices. You need your, your ears, your spiritual ears need to be tuned to a different frequency and you cannot afford certain people distorting that frequency with their frequency. So mm. you, need to, you need to learn to love people but at the same time cut them off because as far as your purpose is concerned, where you're going and the the, the, the display of your kingship mandate is concerned, you mm. don't need those kinds of voices. Mm. So you, 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 you take your vision, you test it out at a small level, you want to feed one billion people, that's fine. That's a great vision. Your father in the, your father can do it. He can do it yeah. through you. But start with feeding five people. Feed mm. five people on your street. Mm. Docu- document the process. What did it cost you to feed the five people? How much did it cost to bring those five people together? Document your process in pictures and in video. And after you've done that, go into the streets. Go on LinkedIn and start telling business leaders across the globe how you have fed five people so that you can inspire those of them who have always had the dream of feeding one billion people to come and join your vision and bring mm. their their resources to the table and say, we believe in you, we believe in your passion, we see what you have done with five people and I'm going to invest one billion naira and we're going to partner together and feed one billion people. That is how it works. So I encourage you, no matter how dark the road seems to be, your father is not dark. God is still mm. on the throne. He's still the king and he has made you a king. That's why he's called king of kings. And he's expecting that at the end of the day, you deliver on your mandate. You are not going to die filled with your potentials and your gifts. According mm. to Dr. Miles Monroe, you are definitely going to die empty at the end of the day because you have given everything to the world on your dying day. And on your deathbed, people will be celebrating you. Nobody will be mourning. Thank you very much. Beautiful. Dr. Noel Akpata, I like that closing. You are a king. Build your process. Stay away from negativity. Announce your success. And those who know what you are will partner with that success. Amazing. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you for hanging in there. Thank you for listening. You know, you know how we do it in this space. We come in to lean on one another's experience to forge a positive path. And you will agree with me. We've had a swell time with Dr. Noel on the show. Mm, but I have to go now. But you know how we say it on the show. Till I come your way again. Bye for now. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah, beautiful. Before we sign off, I just want to encourage you. Yeah, it's been a wonderful time. And also, I'd like to hear from you your feedback. You know, you've been listening to the World Cafe podcast. I would love to hear from you the feedback. If you have any questions, yeah, you go ahead and ask those questions you can reach me at my email address amakri garibaldi at gmail.com amakri is a-m-a-c-h-r-o-e-e g-a-r-i-b-a-l-d-i at gmail.com yeah and uh, we'll get back you know how we do it on the show thank you Heart for time it has been with you on the word cafe podcast today thank you for being there you can catch me up on my social media handles twitter facebook linkedin instagram all at amakri isoboye also you can get copies of my books 
a cocktail of words, the color of words, and my HRO notebook on Amazon and on Robin Height online bookstores. You can also subscribe to my YouTube page at the same address. Yes, till we see you again. Bye for now.